Five minutes before the start of an event, your client hands you a flash drive and says, we need you to play this video. What do you do? Don't tell me it's never happened because I know it has. It happens all the time. So hey everyone, my name is Doug. I run a video production company in Orem, Utah called DJP and we do live events of all types. And this exact scenario happens a lot. Client doesn't have all their videos ready or there's a last minute addition or a speaker doesn't show up and they want to have video to fill their spot. You got a video file and you got to play it. Uh, how do you handle that? Well, I'm not necessarily going to be able to give you the best solution, but I'll show you two solutions that I've used that have worked pretty well and I've been pretty happy with. So the first one of them is actually using a computer to play back the files, but not necessarily in the way you might be thinking. Now the natural tendency, double click on the file, make it full screen, and then use the HDMI output of your computer in order to get it, in, get it into your switcher. Well, there's some problems with that, and it isn't necessarily the best way to go. Uh, pri primarily because your computer probably isn't necessarily set to the right resolution and frame rate for a switcher, and so you're going to jump through headaches in, in order to make that all work. Uh, there's a better way, and you probably already have the software to do it and may not even realize it just yet. So the solution that I found for this exact scenario is to use Adobe Premiere. I know you're thinking, hey, that's an editing application. Why in the world would you use that for video playback? Well, because it's got all the fundamentals that are there. It, it's able to scale video. It's able to deal with different frame rates, different resolutions, whatever. And it is able to do it in real time on any sort of modern, decent hardware. It's also got acceleration from your GPU if you have one. You know, there's a lot of advantages there that you're not necessarily going to find with other with other solutions. So I'm going to show you how to actually do this with Adobe Premiere. Um, it works best if you have some sort of capture card. And for this example, I'm using a DeckLink SDI. But basically, any supported capture card with an output will actually will, will work for this, uh, such as like the uh, mini monitor from Blackmagic. Uh, but there's any number of other ones that are out there as well, and they should all work. That's is a great way to do it. You don't have to deal with having to dismiss any sort of. You don't have to move the cursor off screen. You don't have to worry about adjusting volume, any of those kinds of things. It all just plays out natively on SDI or HDMI or whatever output your card has and that can go directly in your switcher and just work. So let's take an example here and take a look. So I've got Adobe Premiere set up here and on the, uh, in, in the project section down here. So I've already preloaded a video file into here. This is episode 10 of the Stream Team series from this channel. And if I want to play this back, there's only a handful of steps that we actually need to do. So I'm going to take this this video clip, take it and drag it over to the timeline. That's actually going to create a brand new timeline with that with that video, and it gets the settings for that that sequence or timeline from the file itself. Now, in this particular case, uh, the file we're playing back is in 4K, but we need to play it out at 1080p 29.97 because that's how I'm shooting this video in. So we'll need to modify the sequence settings in order to make that match. So we'll go up to sequence, sequence settings, and then uh, time base 29.97, that's fine. And then we're going to adjust the frame size, so 1920 by 1080, and then we're going to hit OK, which the sequence is now the right settings, but you notice that the video got a little bit bigger. The reason for that is it's being cropped. So what we need to do here is we need to go up down here on the, on the timeline, right-click that video, and say Scale to Frame Size. And now the video fits inside that window. At this point, it really is just a matter of pressing the space bar. And you can see down there in the bottom window that the video is playing back. So nice and easy, you know, easy peasy. Uh, it's just working. Um, this, if your computer is reasonably fast, it will automatically do scaling and frame rate conversion in real time without any sort of real artifacts. Now, it doesn't take a supercomputer, but you wanted something that's at least uh, somewhat powerful. You know, something more than your uh, low-end laptop or whatever. But, but there it is. You know, that's really easy. It's you can take any any sort of video file, drop it into that timeline, and and uh, play it back. Now, if you're going to be doing a lot of videos, I actually recommend 
reusing the same sequence over and over again. So you don't have to create a new timeline for each one of them. So I can delete that one out of there and then grab this other one, drop it in there. I want to keep the existing settings. I don't want it to change the sequence. So I'm going to say keep existing and there's the video file. So in this case, the video file was at the right resolution, so we don't, so scaling the frame size doesn't do anything. But again, just hit the spacebar, and playback automatically starts. You don't necessarily have to do anything else. Now, if you want to make that a little bit easy, easier, what you can do is go up to preferences, Once you're in the preferences window, you go down to media and under default media scaling, instead of none, you say scale to frame size. And then anytime you drop a video file into a sequence, it's going to automatically scale it to the right size. So at that point, drop the file in, press the space bar, and it's playing, you're good to go. So again, really easy. And it's software you probably already have. In a lot of cases, you might even have a playback, a capture card in your computer already. So great solution. I've uh, used this many, many, many times. Typically I use it with uh, an old MacBook Pro that I have. It's a 2012 model, so it's actually quite old, hooked into a Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio 4K, and that has worked great. So uh, good way to play back video. Now, if you actually have a little bit of time before you need to play the video, you can get a little bit higher quality output by pre-rendering the files and then playing them on the HyperDeck Studio Mini. So I've got one of those here, a little SD card based recorder, for Blackmagic Design. Most of, the, most of us use these for video recording, but they're capable of video playback as well. The tricky thing about these is they're a little bit finicky in what video formats that they'll accept. So we'll go through some of that and I'll show you the settings that have actually worked for me. Um, with that said, we'll go back, let's go back into Premiere because the settings that we use here are going to be basically identical to the ones we used for playback a moment, moment ago. So a sequence settings, 1080p, 29.97, because that's, that's the format that we're sending into our switcher. And from there, it's actually not too difficult to render out a file that's going to be compatible. So we bring up the export window, and it's actually not too hard to get the right format for export. So the settings I found to work best are QuickTime for the format, and then under Preset, choose Apple ProRes 4444. So some of the other ProRes can work, but I've had the best luck with this. And with that selected, all the other settings are basically already ready to go, because this is a preset to build it right into Premiere. You can't really even save over it. So we're going to change the output name. I'm going to say Dr.mov, and then say Save. And from there, we can go ahead and export that file. And it's going to render a file that we're going to transfer over to the HyperDeck Studio Mini here in just a moment. Now I can tell you uh, one thing that has thrown me off quite a bit in the past is you copy these files to an SD card, you pop it in the recorder, and then they don't show up. It's like they don't even exist. Well, what I found out kind of the hard way is that for a file to show up on an SD card in the HyperDeck Studio Mini, all the files on the card need to be in the same format. So you can't mix and match. So you can't have some files on there, 1080p 24 or 4K at 30 frames per second. You need to have make sure that all the files on your card are in the format that you need for playback. So for purposes of demonstration here, all the files that I'm going to stick on this card are in 1080p at 29.97 frames per second. Now, uh, you can just copy the files to the card, but I'll show you another way to do it, which uh, may be a little more convenient if you're, if you're away from uh, the device. So I'm actually going to connect to my HyperDeck Studio Mini using FileZilla. It's a file transfer program. Uh, the HyperDeck Studio Mini actually supports FTP, file transfers. So I'm going to go ahead and make a connection here. In my case, mine is 101867. And with that connection, it doesn't require a username and password or anything like that. It will show folder for each card. In this case, we're going to go to card one. And then from there, I navigate to where I have the files on my computer. And there we go. So there's that doctor.mov that I created a moment ago. And I'm just going to drag and drop that 
onto the other window and then that's going to get uploaded. Uh, if you're doing this method, make sure you've got the latest firmware for the HyperDeck Studio Mini. It's a much, much, much faster for doing file transfers than the old one. It will transfer nearly at the speed of your Ethernet connection, which is usually pretty good. It's usually fine. Okay, now, so you can see that I have the doctor.mov file on my card there. And if I switch to this other view, so the bottom left corner of your window here is actually the HyperDeck, and if I, there we go, so now it's playing. All right, so there on the bottom left is video playback from the HyperDeck Studio Mini, and you can see that it's actually playing that doctor.mov file. So the big trick to making this work is making sure that all the files that you put on your SD card that go into your HyperDeck Studio Mini are in the same format. That's really the big gotcha, because main, basically the, the device will only list the files that are in the format of the first file on the card, so if the first file encounters is a different format than the file you want to play, you're never going to be able to access the file you want to play. So just make sure that everything on your card is the, right, is the same format. I use multiple cards. So I've got a card for 1080p, 2997, card for 2160, 2997, and so forth. That's the easiest way to handle that, and I'll make sure that it's going to work for you. So with that, this is the end of part one. In part two, I'm going to take this concept a little bit farther and actually demonstrate how to do video playback of a video that has an alpha channel, which basically means that some of the video is actually transparent. So the traditional ways of doing this are to use a Luma key or a chroma key. Those never quite look as nice as one that actually has transparency information built right into the file. So in part two of this video, I'm going to show you how to actually play back a file with an alpha key on the HyperDeck Studio Mini into a switcher and set, up, set it all up so that you're actually getting a nice clean overlay of a graphic on top of your video. So uh, that video is coming soon, so stay tuned for that. If you're new to the channel, please, uh, please subscribe. I'd love to have you join us. We do video production related content several times per week. We've both got videos like this where I'm just kind of talking to camera, t explaining things, talking about some of the more advanced topics and some of the more technical nature, and some of the more technical things that are part of video production. But we've also got a new series we started about a month and a half ago with my friend Wade Ingram where we, it's called the Stream Team, where we actually um, are starting at the very beginning, starting with the very basics, and I'm teaching her everything that she needs to know in order to go online and we are currently 10 episodes into that series uh, i think by the time you watch this you might not, we actually have 11 but anyway so yeah we start at the beginning talking about cameras talking about switchers and so if that's something that interests you i encourage you to go go watch that series and also to share that series with anybody who you know that might be potentially interested in doing video production or live streaming so it really starts with the basics. So anyway, if you guys have questions, you can leave those in the comment section down below. Although, although I do ask that you keep them brief, I've got an awful lot going on, and I don't really have a lot of time to do re research for people. But if you've got a question that I can, is something that I can answer off the top of my head, feel free to leave that in it, down in the comment section down below. Also, be sure and check the description on this video for links for uh, email mailing lists in order to be notified of new videos and other channels that I'm involved with and a website that I've created for managing video production business. There's a, there's a lot going on down there, so don't miss that. Uh, check that out as well. So Anyway, thanks everyone for watching, and have a fantastic day.